to the B movie special episode of The Cinebeards. If this one is bad, <laughs> it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so much blood. What is wrong with you, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you said B movie, and I just died. <laughs> so this, yeah, this is our B movie special. I'm here with Dion. Hi, Marcus. Why is this going out on Valentine's Day? And joining us again, Andre. That's Hello why it's again. Valentine's Day. Hi. Two weeks in a row. I'm trying to say hi to them, Jason. Well, say hi. I'm sorry. I'm just saying that you're our Valentine's Day draw. Andre, say hi to them. Hello. You have fans. to say hi to the audience. You have Hello. To, don't audience. wait for other people to talk <laughs> to prompt you. Just say it. Whenever you're ready. Hi. You Good job. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Fucking took you long enough. <laughs> Okay, so in this episode, uh, we're going to look at what a B-movie is, right? why we think they're so popular, and then we're just going to look at some of our cool B-movies, and I've got a little game show for you guys. Nice, oh, B-movies yeah. movies, movies are like sort of kind of cheapy, slightly crappy movies, but they're still really cool. People like them because they're really cool. Now to the game! Well, actually, do you know why they're called B-movies? Because they are B-grade. Ooh, no, I actually know this one. Okay, please. Yeah. Historically, in the cinemas back in the 30s and 40s, yeah, yeah, there would be, and into the 50s as well. You would also go. You would always go to a showing of a film, but there would always be a film accompanying it. Mm -hmm. uh, One that was. Oh, so it's like a B side. In exactly, final it was singles. like a B side, and because not everyone stayed for the B side of the movie. People stopped putting so much money into them. Whoa. They became lower, huh. lower budget productions. They would give them to like the new talent at the studio to sort of wet their feet. It's like if the bass decided they also to write be... a song, that would be the B side. Exactly. To the right. Yeah, it was, uh, and that's why they're always more, I guess, quote unquote, experimental. Yeah, they'd go into the more out there genres. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, okay. That's why you had the Whoa. crazy sci-fi things like the original Little Shop of Horrors, mm. which was. Which was Jack Nicholson's first ever on screen role. Oh, really? As well. Yeah. Oh. So, are you guys telling me someone in the 50s would go into a cinema, go, We want to watch Ben Hur, a fantastic film, and then. Well, that was in the quick... 60s, but go okay, on. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Movie day again. Marcus strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I Two it... weeks in a row, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in a row. <laughs> okay, regardless. You would, you would go into okay, watch so, Lawrence so Cas of okay, so, okay, so Casablanca in the 30s. Uh, th is that correct? Maybe? No, no. no, no I don't know. Is that 41. 41. No, it's not 41. No, it's in the 30s, 41. wasn't it? No, no 41, 41 was the war. It didn't come out during the World it War. It came out during the war. It came out in 1941. Get the date. I want a date now to, to regain some... Wait, what? Some, some yeah, no, you're not going to get dates from getting the movie released. It doesn't matter. Like the that. point is, Just they walk that. in, <laughs> boom, they're going to watch Casablanca now. Yeah. They get hit with a room. <laughs> well, Casa Casablanca, and then if they hang around afterwards, they get a room palette cleanser. Oh, the, great. The, the, Just the a thing, bit of tearing the, me the apart. The thing is that they would, uh, like Marvel, Marvel's kept that tradition alive with what we like to call post credit scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they're stingers. Yeah, they're, they're stingers. They're, they're, it's actually just a homage to the stingers. It came out in 1942, but it's set war. in 1941 during the war. Well done. So I didn't know it came out then physically. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Nice. Oh, but also in the f in the 40s, a lot of these B movies mm -hmm. were the noir films, and then the noir films became more and more popular. Mm. Hence, they became their own sort of A-list genre, so to speak. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. the same thing happened with science fiction. Mm. When in the 50s, a lot of science fiction started taking off, like in the late 50s into the early 60s, because in the early 50s, a lot of the B gray B movies. Mm -hmm. I, why am I constantly doing air, air quotes? quotes. We, can, we can hear it coming through in your, in your voice. People hear it. The fans know. Well, the, fans the thing know. is, because you're speaking smoothly and then you go, B movies. Yeah. You can kind of hear it. Why you can't, do you put that awkward pause there, Jason? Air quotes. That sounded really weird. Oh, Marcus is air quoting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be because they were sci-fi then, you know, those started becoming popular. And then mid-50s to early 60s, sci-fi really started taking off. Um, wow. What I do know happened, I don't know if they qualify, Marcus, as uh, B-movies. But I know in, like, the 70s, um, they started making, like, um, like cheaper films. 
uh, but that still had a bit of a cult following, like the Hammer Horrors, for for example. I don't know if they qualify as B movies because a lot of people just went like in England. You know, we don't have the Hollywood budgets, but let's make these horror films like with the uh, Christopher Lees of the world, and they still got enough money because they were cheap to make. So I don't mm. know. That was obviously coming from a very different side well, from the originals. I don't yeah, know if those but, count because I love. But those. because of the similarities in quality and in how they were made they were referred to as beam it's, it's like the whole yeah. thing because oh, it like, became a different new, a it's new like, thing yeah. it's like all vacuum cleaners are hoovers, hoovers. yeah yeah but uh, hoovers the original brand i see yeah and, and yeah. the subsequent ones i really like you've got to get your timelines right <laughs> yeah you you know you know your dates no i i i'm actually like, being like, a little like, uncomfortable like, by how many facts mark this is, this is like when top gear actually does like a serious bit of crime right? journalism every now and then it's like, like what's, you, whoa hold on what's uh, going on yeah and these are you, these are like actual facts not just easter eggs yeah, no, <laughs> if you're looking at the 70s andre you're looking at the grindhouse tradition no mm. and like, the exploitation yeah the grindhouse and the the exploitation forms of that era you know you had black exploitation you had gay exploitation like sex exploitation sex exploitation any sort of ploitation that people could come up with. Yeah. Ploitation, yeah. I was going to say, they, they actually had exploitation, exploitation, where they took films about the exploitation films and made cheap oh, ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's like amazing. Documenting them. It, it, that's pr it was pretty meta. It gave it And then there was idea, meta exploitation. Yeah, yeah the, the, what, uh, there was meta exploitation, yeah. exploitation, exploitation. I mean, if you want... Uh, <laughs> 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 it a little squared. <laughs> Man, of course, one of the, the best examples of... You know, the 70s grindhouse tradition is the Shaft film from mm. 1970-something. Ooh. 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 Facts are slipping Ooh. there. Ooh. Facts are slipping there. Uh, 1973, I think. <gasps> oh, <laughs> you, better, you, you better hope. Oh, <laughs> you better pray to whichever <laughs> gods you haven't pissed off yet. <laughs> da, 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 da. Nice, you can sing it. 1971. Oh. Oh, dear. Yeah, so we can't I believe anything else you've said up until now. I suppose now. the entire argument you're making, if it doesn't rest it's on, on solid dates, it's, it's you know, for all naught. All of this is yeah. just, just wrong. Yeah, it's all alternative facts. I'm sorry. Um, but do those count as B-movies? Yeah. Which you, um, Obviously, the, the definition is quite broad, but... Retroactively, yes. Okay. Yeah, they're not it's, sort it's, of, it's they're, a different they're kind not, of beast. Like, yeah, they're, they're not the reason yeah. that b-movies are called b-movies but they definitely fall within that sort of um, yeah b-movies is kind of like sub-genres mm. like you get the purposeful yeah. b-movies that are still b-movies you get the ones that are just made by incompetent people you get the ones that are low budget yeah. Yeah. okay but to be fair the movies in those days a lot of people said okay these are cheaper movies but i still um, enjoy them for what they are mm. they're at least different it's a different artistic experience from the mainstream stuff but i suppose what, the ones that interest me are the really horrible ones. The yeah. ones that I know are bad. That I know the acting's bad. I know the scripting's bad. But I have this perverse sense of humor. And that's why I like them. So I don't know if that's more a recent thing. Like a 90s thing. Like The Room and those things. Oh, enjoying, them, enjoying them ironically. Be because, yeah, exactly. I don't think those old ones were like that at all. I think that's more a modern thing. But I might be wrong. Well, I don't know. I, I, well, there's the whole we, MST3K thing. Yeah, that... Yes, but that's also 90s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'd, be <laughs> yeah. I'd honestly be surprised. Uh, because, I mean, human nature doesn't change that much. That means, no. It's just that now, sort of, our fascination with them is really well documented because of shows like that and because of the internet. Um, I'm pretty sure there were people, there was a reason that those films were sort of picked up steam and became their own thing, probably because young people were watching them and enjoying them ironically. Yeah, yeah I remember. I mean, it's always good to have a like nice riff on them. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was as much a thing then as it is now. It's just that it's more now, documented. Yeah. It's like it's it's like sort of off on a tangent now, but but reading about contemporary criticism of Empire Strikes Back, you know the Cinebeard's going off on a tangent. No, oh, I would no. be but, it, but it's that kind of thing where we don't necessarily have access to what people are actually saying about something like Empire Strikes Back when it came out, um, and then people sort of have to go through the archives of magazines and letters that were written in. God bless the internet archive. Yeah. And, yeah. and and they actually, and then they find, you know, that sort of the kinds of complaints people had about something like The Last Jedi are identical to complaints that they had about yeah. Empire, but because it was sort of in this pre-internet age and because it's, yeah. it's sort of considered a classic, all that kind of day-to-day -day criticism has been filtered out in favor of like, totally. it is this incredible monolithic it is the thing. best star wars movie 
period. Yeah, and, and you're sort of not allowed to criticize any sort of single aspect of it. I think it's the same thing with film, that yeah. I think people were enjoying the things the way we enjoy the room. Mm. They were probably enjoying a lot of those films. There was just less access to home video. There was less access to sort of putting on your own midnight screenings or something. That's yeah. actually also a good point. Like when, when home video became a thing, mm. that's when like the popularity of these B movies also started yeah. to steadily totally. gain ground because what you have to remember is they were already there. They were cheap to mass produce mm. on VHS and just flood the market because the studios wanted to make some money and they had all this that they didn't really care about. Mm. If you know, a couple of hundred copies, were copied at infinite if they don't care because they made the money from the hundred copies already yeah oh no yeah. one's renting it at the, at the video and no store and it's them. like oh, okay it's one dollar for this one or whatever it's 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 a quarter okay fine we don't have a lot of money let's watch this piece of crap tonight and people are like dude my parents rented this thing last night it was the worst thing i've seen in my life get the lads over i, I mean you've got to see this exactly you've, you've exactly got to see this this movie's called the lord of the rings <laughs> piece of it's crap. weird man so <laughs> just I, like little people they, 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 yeah i think there's always been a market for stuff for that it is... wasn't it wasn't modern times <laughs> yeah especially with how how stilted blockbusters you like you know there was they sort of there was a real sense of you know um propriety about them and you know they were almost formal in many ways you know they, yeah. they were a lot less there was big spectacle but it was always cinema sort of, is an experience exactly <laughs> it, it was all it was very you know grandiose yeah it, yeah, yeah it, it was sort of very sort of almost sterile like very safe you know like tons of censorship and things like that like, are you i mean there's, are, you, are you describing modern hollywood or old <laughs> hollywood? You know, uh, more sort of like 30 plus years right. back but there was always they were always young guys basically who wanted to watch crazy shit mm. and i think the 80s that also bloomed in a in a in a way if i think about a lot of cheesy 80s films yeah, sure but, they exist but in the exactly 70s but the, yeah, the, the, home, the 80s home like video. home and video home and video. the release of the camcorder there we go mm. yeah. the, the, the camcorder only became commercially available in the early 80s which you're exactly marcus I believe it went by up. territory. <laughs> I believe it went to market in the United States in January of nine, no, November of nineteen eighty one. Don't check that fact. If that's I'm correct. assuming it's correct because he looked I'm gonna, really confident. Yeah, he, yeah, he confident. said it confidently. Let's he go. was pointing the, at the table as he said the if thing. The, if the internet says otherwise, it's fake news. And I don't yeah. think all of our listeners are gonna write in. But yeah, where uh, so with the release of the camcorder, these kids who had these ideas for the movies that they wanted to see like they were like i'm gonna go make a movie and they made those mm -hmm. movies and they got good enough to get to hollywood and be given a little bit of money mm. and then they made just like bad movies just like bad movies well, i mean just, yeah. look at, just look at something like you know evil dead yeah i mean which obviously like an incredible classic but if, if you look at something like that i mean that was made with basically no money they were mm -hmm. living in that cabin like the little bit that i mean they were volunteering for the most part didn't they have uh, to they mop made... up the blood to reuse it i don't know but that sounds that about sounds right, right. I, 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 and I mean cameras and a lot of the b take and... shots were yeah. of the crew not the cast like um hands and stuff where you just yeah. see limbs also yeah. they couldn't afford the fake glass so they just broke real glass all the time <laughs> so that and i mean that was that was the making the film they wanted to see yeah and That's access fantastic. to that kind of equipment and that kind of portability wasn't around 20 years yeah before. plus i think there's there's a very basic variable here of just like the sheer number of movies and the demand with the economy growing with the world becoming more integrated the total number of movies produced just went up exponentially so there was more of a demand to just go i don't have quite enough money but it's okay make a cheaper one but just yeah in the 80s there were a dime a dozen of these really bad movies late night that kept showing they exist in the 70s but i'm pretty sure the sheer number won't be anywhere near the 80s yeah i mean also just the baseline costs for producing a film yeah. plummeted yeah because was equipment was becoming better, yeah. yeah was becoming yeah cheaper why do you guys love them or are you b-movie aficionados like me oh, i'm a massive b-movie fan mm. of course yeah. we are yeah. yeah andre do i need to remind you that you and i started many 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 years ago oh, yeah. 
the Bad Movie Club of Doom. Doom. The Bad Movie Club of Doom. Which I can was say ironically to... doomed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I hey, it had a good son. few years, and I have to say this, because I thought it was hilarious. I was looking at my folder again, and Marcus made two folder. The first one that had a crap load of movies that we all watched, and then Volume 2, The Worsening. Yeah. <laughs> and it had some terrible ones, like Red, oh. Red Sonja and a couple of... Good classic. So that shows actually you can have great actors in a bad movie. Arnie yeah. did feature I mean, Red Star Crash with Hasselhoff, which is not oh. discount Star Wars, which is great. Oh, Star it's Crash. so great. Um, obviously, The Giant Claw is a is a veritable classic of cinema. Nearly killed a friend of ours. Nearly killed yeah. a friend of ours. Um, oh, I, I made a good list. I don't know if you guys did, but... Um, no, we're we're always prepared, but let's hear your list first. Oh, okay. can I go through my list? I'm of excited. Course. I love I my beam. I think it's going to be exactly the same as my list. I, I'm just going to just oh, say dear. ditto. On I won't each do that. One. Maybe we'll go one by one. Um, uh, I have a couple of weird ones. Uh, firstly, Troll Two is one of the classics. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, awesome. And for me, why it's so phenomenal, apart from the movie being a train wreck and having some hilarious lines, is. Um, Firstly, that there was no number one. <laughs> they went straight to Troll 2. There was never a Troll 1, and it doesn't feature a single troll. They're all goblins <laughs> who turn people into vegetables and then eat them because they're all vegetarian. Oh it features that line. <laughs> oh my god. And the fact that the town where the goblins live is called Nullbog. Which is actually uh, referenced <laughs> in oh, an Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Oh, really? When the, um, when the cousin is turned into green goo with yeah. the melting of thing. Oh. Thor goes, oh my god! <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes, that's it's class. That's Taika Waititi. Yeah, definitely 100%. But my favorite's The Room. Um, I, I don't say it's necessarily the, the best one ever. It's maybe the one that got me most hooked initially, but mm. for me, it's just... I still think most people claim it's the Citizen Kane of bad movies i kind of uh, agree with that not like it's the worst but just because it's Wizzo the most is popular so, it's it's it's, the, it's has something to him i don't know it, it does i mean i i'd argue that samurai cop is a worse movie it is a worse movie and any neil oh, yeah, breen no, movie is. is worse yeah um, any neil breen movie is worse I mean, but i think it, i think the room is like the, the citizen can of it because it has the social clout yeah there we go yeah that's a good it, argument. it's sort of i what i find really surprising about the room is i thought nothing would ever unseat plan nine from outer space because that's always been the mm. go-to yeah. worst movie yeah, plan, in the world. It, plan, yeah. it was plan nine from outer space and uh man of the hands of fate yeah. <laughs> like yeah. those two yeah pl like plan nine from outer space like that's always been the one like the go-to for people to make midnight screenings to go and yeah. watch ironically and and when i heard about you know the room i sort of thought okay cool you know it's a bad form but it's no plan nine yeah. and it, it actually seems to have unseated like, it, it. yeah it really which, which is a weird thing I, I didn't think that that was the kind of thing that, that's like making a new star wars and suddenly the popular consensus is that this new star wars is better than empire like there's, mm. there's just something like the like that happened like a social consciousness thing like where no matter how good a star wars form is no one's ever gonna there's never going to be a consensus that it's better than Empire, um, well, regardless of even it, like it, it, if it's for ten years. Yeah, if it's objectively <laughs> better in in every conceivable way, you'll never get people to admit it. And I feel oh, like oh no, because the, a very smart man once said nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. But uh, but so yeah, so for me the the room like that part of the phenomenon is just that something came along that unseated Plan Nine. But for me, a part of that is Tommy Wiseau as a figure himself, and I think yeah. he, oh, yeah. he did an a absolute lot. enigma. He, he, he's he's, he's one of the most strangest human beings. In a puzzle. <laughs> there we go. Yes, carry on. He's just a weirdo. I yeah. don't know. He's uh, I mean he's uh, no one knows where he came from. No one knows exactly how old he is. Mm. Uh, there's where so he got his money <laughs> money yeah th there's so m there are so many mysterious factors about this man and he has such a unique accent and the way the things he laughs at the things <laughs> he comments on he he just doesn't talk like he's from this planet so i think in that regard for me it's <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever uh, in terms of b movies because i haven't seen anyone that weird ever yeah i, I think like <laughs> he himself is a b movie yeah, that, that's what I mean. Human. Yeah, that's yeah, a great a way to put it. He's yeah. a be human. Well, no, I know that's kind of rude. Yeah, and like, so, I mean, he's he doesn't human. like Batman v Superman that we know of. No, not that we know of. I doubt he would. I think he at least <laughs> have something to say about the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah, I think that that's partly probably part mm. of its popularity is just you need a story around something. You know, like when you, when you're young, you know, and your friends are like, oh, you got to listen to the song. It was it's about this and this and this, or they did this weird thing. I think I think a lot of um, classic things like well, people uh, even adults still do that. Yeah, you know, it's like oh, you've got to play this video game because of X Y Z. Yeah, there has to be some sort of oh, it was the the last film that he made before he died, or yeah. it was it was a th you know like you need some kind of like story hook, and I mean there is Kurt no Cobain greater. Wrote, Kurt Cobain wrote the song while he was shooting heroin between his toes with a joint in the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> while polishing his shotgun. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> oh, what he love was polishing his shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they called that song "Rape Me." Oh, oh. but uh. No, that is what it's called, Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's an actual Nirvana what? song. It's an actual song. Fuck off. I'm, no, there's, yeah. There's, there's actually, in, in the, in the there's now a total tangent. Like, there's, huh? in the recent South Park episode, they go to the old people's home. I <laughs> love and, that! Yeah, they're, they're, like, what? in the cold November morning, rape me. It's a Nirvana song. That's a Nirvana song. Fuck off. So, oh. what the fuck are we saying? Oh, yeah, so th that's the thing is, there is no greater hook than a figure like Tommy Wiseau. I mean, I, I'll, I'd argue a lot of the... Um, the clout that Star Wars had sort of going through like the late 80s and tonight was like of George Lucas like there was this whole thing of you know him being this incredibly consummate world builder you know because every every background character had a name you know and they, they kept releasing the books and the visual mm -hmm. dictionaries and they were wow this thing we obviously we know now in retrospect it was like okay cool give that background character a name so we can sell it as a toy because these toys are selling so incredibly fast yeah um but they, they, there was this whole thing of him as the sort of the creator and the OT and what that's why people can say oh i hate last jedi this isn't george lucas's star wars forgetting that george lucas's star wars gave us like ewok movies and the holiday special and the yeah. prequels and yeah. the tv show that very nearly got made where everyone's dancing the whole time and that was supposed to be canon yeah like that shit he greenlit <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, like, it, it's a thing of like, you need that sort of that that personality and that figurehead. And Tommy Wiseau, they, there's just no one else like him. Yeah, but I must admit, um, just thinking of the other movies, maybe you can think about one, Jason. But what stands out for you, like, as something that's as crazy? Because I think I mean, Neil Breen is crazier in other ways, or Samurai Cop as there, there the is room is very, very unique. Mm. There's another very unique B movie. It's a short form, but I can't actually name it on this podcast oh it's horribly racist and horrible no yeah oh, no, it's a it's a sci-fi film uh about a group of space explorers mm -hmm. and the whole thing is black and white until they come across a planet that they discover is under the rule of a certain type of person but when they change that rule the movie becomes color and this paradise for this group of explorers it's a phenomenally bad movie and it's it takes place in like 25 minutes wait isn't that wizard of oz that you're talking about <laughs> you know it's no, sort this of one's a made... riff on wait, turns, wizard wait, of oz it turns color and like the the, the the owner the ruling you know class of the the the, the world changes and shit that that's just wizard of oz that you're except the, about. except this is a movie where everything's made black and white but it was made in the early 90s i'm pretty yes. sure about that yeah and uh well, and, and was, was made during the age of okay but this is just a uh, this is just men on a ship and they find a planet with a with women on and you can't say that no you, you can't. can't say woman it's a bunch it's it's men on a ship they find a planet full of women i.e earth and a bunch of others they exterminate all the women after all the women <laughs> in the galaxy are dead color is restored to the just, universe that's the original star wars and like leia is like the sole survivor that they of, of the female <laughs> yeah. purge <laughs> they exactly paraphrases beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, tell us another one. Um, well, I, I well, I, I, I'm worried about him doing this because it might infringe on the game. Oh, because what the game is that I've set up for you guys is I'm going to give you the title to a B movie, and I want you guys to guess the plot. Um, okay. Can Can I just mention one more B movie before we move on? Now this came out after no just before it was actually just before stephen king's it mm -hmm. it's called killer clowns 
both spelled with K's, mm -hmm. from outer space. Oh, it's oh, glorious. Yes, yes, I know this one. Ah, so, so the basic premise, and I hope this wasn't in the game. No. Like, it's these aliens that disguise mm -hmm. themselves as clowns. Yeah. And they eat people. Okay. Then they turn them into... I'm getting there. Okay. But in order to eat the people, they use a special ray gun that turns the people into cotton candy. Okay, okay. yeah, that makes because sense. Because they can Sounds only good. eat the cotton candy to gain the human's power. And it's it's it just gets more crazy from there. Like I don't want to spoil it because people really should just watch it. They better it. just be careful not to mix up the ray gun that turns people into cotton candy with the ray gun that turns people into like ceiling insulation. Oh god. Yeah. Oh the yeah, yeah. yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're just like gonna the, get cancer. Yeah. That pink stuff, yeah. No, no, it's just gonna cut your mouth up, dude. Those fibers. Yeah. They're gonna it's gonna shred your mouth. Um, you better be careful. That's a health and safety thing. By the way, Jason, it won't be in your list, but uh, a movie that I do want to mention, because I think um, it's sort of a prime example of why some B-movies are merely funny for the sake, or, or just for the reason that their budgets were so low and they had to improvise with props and things. And there was one I really enjoyed called Tarkin vs. the Vikings, which was a Turkish oh, film from yes. 1970. Oh, something. I remember Tarkin vs. the Vikings. why I love it so much is some B-movies are for the... Well, the mere pr uh, premise al from the mere premise yeah. alone, like killer clowns, it's funny. The r the room almost just because it makes no sense. But Tarkin was like a historic epic that they tried to make. They tried to make a serious film, but it had such a low budget. So all the uh, all these Hun warriors that were there, and they looked like Hun warriors. Um, their yeah, shoulder the pads fur. were super furry, but they clearly used bath mats. And some of them were brightly colored, like these bright yellow bath mats. And there was this octopus god that people get sacrificed to at one point in time. It looks like a, an inflatable pool octopus. <laughs> and it's those bad props that make the movie well, funny. Yeah, and there was the also Kraken. that part where um, he fights a baby. Yes. <laughs> What? I can't even. Oh, yeah, someone. It's a raid on the village. Yeah. And, and they just have this toy baby that they kill because it's meant to be like a. You know, they, they ransack and pillage and, and destroy the whole village. And it's just like, it's obviously. This, it's not. You can't even. The gravitas is lost because it's this little. He just tosses doll. this clearly plastic baby across the room. <laughs> I think the thing that, that for me, the, the kind of B movie that I enjoy most is, is that it's, it's the ones with sincere intentions. Yes. Yeah. And and where they're taking themselves and they're taking the whole premise very seriously. So I mean, like killer clowns from outer space. Obviously, I haven't seen it. But yeah. Like I mean, I've seen some of the Sharknado stuff, and I tend to enjoy that slightly less. Yeah. Than the ones because that are because B movies it's, because it's so aware. Yeah. It's like it's like a, if like something like Sharknado is like a cover song. Yeah. of a real B movie. If that yeah. makes it like it's Dion likes them really big budget B movies. Yeah, well I like big budget B movies, but I like the small budget ones, but I like any film where there's a sincere attempt at making it and it's self serious. There's almost you know, you you can sort of see like yeah. someone thinks that they're doing something really good and it's just through ineptitude um or circumstance that it's just for i mean that's the why the room as well you yeah know? yeah so, i mean like plan nine you know plan nine wasn't made to sort of be ridiculous plan nine was sort of marred by like incompetence and budgetary constraints and i love that rather than yeah. really self-aware i mean there's yeah, still a lot of good i'm not ones. a big fan of the um asylum movies yeah so they, much, it's, 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 they're very <laughs> initially they were trying to like do it sincerely and make it yeah but those but aren't realized... those aren't b movies like we have to make that distinction what, what's the what's yeah. the term mock mock buster, buster. Yeah, yeah, they, they didn't start out that way but no they didn't they, they have yeah. become um, that and trauma uh, trauma films those are b movies mm -hmm. tomcat productions make some pretty good yeah. b movies uh yeah. trauma gave a lot of people their like foot in the door people like jj abrams mm -hmm. um james gunn a lot of these sort of what we now see as like our nerd directors and nerd mm -hmm. writers so to speak all at some point had something to do with trauma oh. like i think mm. was i it was either one of them wrote nomeo no tromeo and juliet i think that was james gunn i don't know Possibly. that one yeah. it's a good no it's a b movie <laughs> okay it's a good b movie but, yeah and 
is it enjoyable? I, for, yes. I define it as good if it's literally what Dion said of like people trying really hard and failing miserably. Right. And I know that's like Schadenfreude. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah Trauma gave, <laughs> gave us the Toxic Avenger films, for example. Ah, okay. So for me, it's it's almost the same reason that I that I enjoy like really strange bargain basement um, kung fu films. Oh, I love a good kung fu film. Oh yeah, a like good kung fu B movie is. Uh, I just love it because very often you'll have guys in there that are sort of the you know legitimately good fighters but there's just the filmmaking is just so inept mm. and the continuity oh. and the, it, it's just and i absolutely love it so, okay so let's move on to this uh game of mine that actually thomas helped me prepare because he is oh, our local thanks, b-movie thomas. expert yeah and he's also our favorite guest ever always yeah Say it to my face, Dion. I just did. did. I just <laughs> did. I mean, no, I, I was take... looking away. Oh, this is, this is <laughs> Get his attention first. This is great. <laughs> Thomas is also the first crossover character because he is joining one of my multiplayer games, which you would be oh, out nice. by the time this episode goes out. I like our extended universe. We have extended Thomas universe Thomas is our Nick friends. Fury. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, if you do know what it is and you have seen it, which is highly likely with some of these, just like say that you have and then the other people can try and figure okay, out probably have the plot. So, so uh, we'll start off with a movie from 1988 called Robo Vampire. Uh, Robo Vampire. And what do we do, Jason? I, I would like you to give me the synopsis of what Robo Vampire is about. Alright. Uh, Robocop uh, meets, the, uh, meets the Count Dracula. Uh, just for a meal and they go out they date for a few years I have no idea <laughs> uh, Robo Vampire they, they build a vampire um, at the IBM lab I like that like 80s IBM yeah I'm literally like sir the pro processors are doing weird things <laughs> <laughs> it's sucking blood out of the system I'll, I'll tell you this um, it does not involve Robocop in any way but they've bootlegged him onto the cover of this. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I not seen this? <laughs> right. well, well, the thing is, I, I still maintain that it has to su have something to do with law enforcement. Like, like there, there definitely has to be a component of, like, taking down a drug ring or something like that. That's actually pretty close. <laughs> what? Okay. okay, he wins. He has yeah, point yeah, for Dion. Okay, Robo Vampire, 1988. Narcotics agent Tom Wilde. <laughs> wait, 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 is he a loose cannon so he agent? Take that drug ring. He's given a second chance at life after being shot and killed. In a futuristic experiment, Agent Wilde is returned to life as an android robot. Well, wait, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, wait, stop. My, uh, That's Robocop. <laughs> he is sent on a very dangerous mission to the depths of the Golden Triangle to rescue Sophie, a beautiful undercover agent who has been captured Golden by the evil drug lord, Mr. Young. And his inhuman creation, the Vampire Beast. Alright, okay. Okay, okay so and it's it nigh incomprehensible, this okay, movie. But okay, why so is it it's called Robo, Robo Vampire? Yeah, when it's clearly Robot versus Ro Vampire. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's literally Robot versus Vampire. Okay, there we go. And the movie. The movie doesn't have an. Uh, have, like, an end. It just sort of stops at one point. Like, without any confirmation of the what money is happening. Rang out, the money wait, ran wait, out. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. This is all starting to sound very familiar it's, with it's, the resurrection and everything. Is Batman v Superman a remake of <laughs> Robot v Vampire? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a poor, it's a poor remake of it. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. like it's a low quality it's remake low of Robo Vampire. It's a low budget, low. Well, no, it's high quality. budget, just you know, really shitty, low skill level. <laughs> so, uh, so Jason, so Dion gets a point, but I almost want to say, do you have to give the the date of the film because if it's if it's in the 80s it's about drugs or nuclear war imminent d death of the world no, from no, the cold why, war the 80s thing. is like a no, giveaway that, drugs, no, no, drugs but that's, but that's why the year is important because it gives you one more clue to put oh, together okay. Your, okay. now i know your i remember okay 80s. this is uh, from 2013 a movie called captain battle colon legacy war legacy war legacy captain war. battle captain battle legacy, legacy war, war. Okay, 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 I'm gonna pitch this one. So, Captain Battle. Is was, he our hero? He's, he's the hero of the story. Uh, just another tip, the synopsis I have here is like an entire page of my phone. 
Okay. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna truncate it a bit. Captain Battle is a retired superhero who is pulled back into the action because of his legacy by a younger hero. It's like, you were Captain Battle. You were the chosen one. <laughs> and they bring him back. You were meant to he... bring balance to the superheroes. <laughs> yeah. You were meant to bring balance. And then they have to fight, I'm going to say, Armenian terrorists who've <laughs> taken over an oil derrick platform. I'm going to in... give you a bit of help here. Go for lower hanging fruit. Iraq. Um, oh, oh, we, oh, we low oh, 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 then, then they're fighting a bunch yeah. of... ISIS. ISIS. <laughs> ISIS is ISIS. in France. Lo lower hanging fruit than that. The what? Russians. Lower than that. Nazis. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, Nazis <laughs> in 2013? <laughs> well, neo-Nazis to be specific. Okay, but, okay. yes. <laughs> oh, neo Knight, like Norway <laughs> trench coats. <laughs> they dodge bullets. <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> you stole another one from me. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, am I close? Well, yeah. whoa, 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 oh, hold, yeah, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've already established the, the neo Nazi thing, right? Yeah. So, but it, it's Captain Battle yeah. Legacy War. Yeah. <sighs> well, World War II actually, is a big yeah. legacy, I suppose. Yeah, you know? I, like, I, I, again, yeah, no, no, actually, I, I like Mark because mine would have been retired, like a general or something, and then they'd, like, they don't, like, trust him like you know that the threat's as bad as it is and it's like no we have to go but yeah i, I like yours more actually than, than my mm. initial pitch so tell us okay sam battle is injured during his tour of duty in the gulf war of course oh, he the loses gulf an war. eye and is near death his good friend brandon storm who is a scientist wow hold on hold on hold on give me the names again <laughs> sam battle sam battle and brandon storm brandon storm popular science wait 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 wait, can I, wait, wait. Brandon Storm, scientist. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who is a scientist, injects him with a secret serum that he has been developing that will save his life. Does um. he make beer at home? <laughs> the scientist? No. Ah, oh, okay, because I was hoping someone would quip like, uh, looks like a storm's brewing. Oh, mm. God. <laughs> <laughs> the side effects are unknown. Sam returns home. It is a struggle to come home after being in the war. So Sam soon learns that the town is being overrun with neo-Nazis. So he doesn't know what the serum was for. So he teams up with Brandon. <laughs> is it just, are they, it's just overrun. They spread like roaches. It was just administered, but without any explanation as to why. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no, he was near death and it was administered to save because okay. he lost an eye. So he was about to die. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to die yeah. then. Yeah. But so yeah. li like what they did to Carl Urban in the Doom movie. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. But, but that's I, weird because if, if you lose an eye, like you won't know that you're going to pass away because you lose death perception. Yeah, but God, oh, God. <laughs> no, one, no, no one else heard that, Dion. <laughs> I'm in direct line of sight of the dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in a 10 foot cone. It's, 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 it's going to get me when I'm editing. <laughs> It's like you've sent a joke for me into the future. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Jason. It's not area effects. I was targeted. <laughs> yeah. Future Jason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Sam learns the side effects of Brandon's serum. He has gained superhuman strength and agility. That's cool. Brandon is then kidnapped by the neo-Nazi's leader, <laughs> the Necromancer. A blonde wow. Aryan sorceress. <laughs> He is then forced Mancer. to help raise the cloned body of Heinrich Jimmy. Himmler from the dead. Necro Womancer? Now I Sam has done the persona of Captain Battle, a crime-fighting hero alter ego starting with Sam's grandfather, Jonathan Battle in World War II. <laughs> Together with Jane, they must face an army of neo-Nazi henchmen, and what's worse, the army of the living dead soldiers from the Third Reich. <laughs> yes! Nazi zombies! I love every movie with Nazi wasn't zombies. There also, wasn't they there must a dead stop snow the necromancer. Sequel? Dead Snow. Wasn't dead, dead Snow, snow dead was snow. the sequel in 2013? They're very yeah. popular. And what was that airship be one? There are two of them, Iron Sky. Iron Sky. I still haven't yeah. seen those. They very must good. stop the necromancer before she succeeds at her ultimate goal of raising the cloned corpse of Adolf Hitler. 
A oh. cloned corpse. So, so he had a clone made and a die. Yeah, just like Himmler in the story. <laughs> that seems that seems really negligent. They're like, we cloned the corpse. It's still dead. Oh dear. <laughs> oh shit. Should have made it alive first. <laughs> that sounds amazing. So but it's she's basically a necromancer. Yeah, so it's yeah. Captain America by way of the bad Wolfenstein game. Sounds glorious. Twenty thirteen. It, it it is pretty glorious that and the, the the suit is on point. Oh, how is have you, have you actually watched it? Yes, I, oh, I've watched is this it. One. Is it as good as it sounds? Yeah, the the suit is very clearly just really light foam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Really poorly Yay. painted light foam. <laughs> it's 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 pretty good, and also oh, the first my. time you meet the neo Nazis, they're in a strip club. Oh, they but love that. They did yeah. not have enough money to pay any of the actresses to remove any clothing. <laughs> Jason, you forgot to mention that one of the Nazis on the poster is red. <laughs> is he? Yeah. That's Himmler. Oh Why is he red? Is he like Hydra? Uh, he's, like, he's Mr. Hydra. The, like oh, the so red so skull. Just like, so this is literally yeah, just oh. the return of the Golden Age comic book legend. Yeah. yeah so this totally. is literally just like... I mean, this is obviously supposed to be Red Skull, Captain America, and... I guess Black, Black Widow. Widow. It sounds amazing. Hi, dear. <laughs> it's it uncanny. Patch. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That is. Wow. Oh no, that's not Black Widow in the background. That's the Necromancer. Yeah, but in terms no, of in, ter in terms of like oh, in terms of, it's, one of, those, it's yeah. one of those things where they make like the knockoff that's so close that grandparents will yeah. buy for their grandkids at Christmas. Time oh, that's accident. how they get them. That makes sense. Okay, they do that a lot actually. Um, Hands of Steel, All right. 1986. Um, hands of right. Steel. Okay, right. so um, so basically, it's a guy, mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, the only way that he can make it out of his neighborhood, or maybe like sort of pay off his father's debts or something, is to become a boxer, right? Some sort of accident happens. He loses his hands. He loses hope. <laughs> um, but he undergoes a, an experimental surgery which gives him Serum. hands of steel um, and he goes on to win the boxing because <laughs> nobody can tell he's got the gloves on <laughs> and, and he, he boxes his way out of the bad neighborhood saves his father from whichever gang was holding holding him hostage because he couldn't pay off his debts but what parents. about the rec center dion <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh, come on jason this is not some kind of cliche <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah and he, he ends the movie visiting his mother's grave and just you know like laying down flowers with with his metal hands cool. all right andre what was your um, I think it's more of a kung fu film, Hands of Steel, but this is featuring a um, sushi chef in downtown Manhattan mm -hmm. who just goes on a rampage of just punching people in the face. Mainly like people he hates, like <laughs> liberals. <laughs> Take that, liberals! And people that, that sit in his sushi shop and go like, yeah. well, you should have the real sushi like back in Japan. You know, like the, those yeah. people yeah. with he the mainly He's angry about the cultural appropriation. He's like, these yeah. sushis are cheap ripoffs, the ones they sell at the supermarkets. That's and he it, goes that's on he a puts an S on the word sushi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he hates liberals <laughs> if he's against the, uh, or, yeah. Anyway. He just hates hipsters. Well, well, I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a final option here. You said mm. it was 1986. Yeah. It's a Hong Kong kung fu action movie. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. It uh, is, it is yeah. set in the States. And yeah. there is not an Asian person in it. All right, cool. So I'm the closest so far. <laughs> A cyborg is programmed to kill a scientist who holds the fate of mankind in his hands. So it's Terminator. So it's he Body of Steel. <laughs> it's just Person of Steel. And they, but and the hands as like, well. No, the hands like of Steel, the rest is like a polycarbonate, well, like, no. composite. Yeah. He, yeah. he honestly just gets steel hands. Steel isn't that bendy, right? So you just want some parts steel and so, the rest so of the, the joint. But, but, but is... the cyborg, he fails and hides in a diner and in a desert run by a uh, woman, uh, woman who likes him. Okay. But then the people who sent him to do the assassin, uh, who sent him to do the assassination that he failed, they're not after him. And so is the local arm wrestling uh, wrestling champ. And he's the hero, wow. isn't he? Is he's he the, the hero, he's and the, the arm yeah, wrestling champ is out. angry at him. Wait, wait, he, so uh, he's a cyborg. Yeah. Okay. So he's a man of steel. 
<laughs> so hold on a second. So the hero of the film yeah. gets given metal hands. Yes. Right? Uses them at some point to win an arm wrestling competition against the local arm okay. wrestling. Okay, I'm going to call it and say I was close. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, arm wrestling, boxing, I'll give it to you. Yeah, Does right, anyone right. eat sushi there? Because I want to win a point. <laughs> well, you it said is it was a diner. The... There we go, yeah, yeah, I mentioned you food. Yeah. Everyone gets a, a third of a point. Yeah, I think, I think we, each, we each get a point there except Marcus. <laughs> okay, Aww. this is one that's going to be you, more of a memory test. You thrashed me in the... <clears throat> in the Captain Battle one. Yeah. Okay, this one is more of a, a, a memory test. Because uh, Thomas has put on here, Geostorm 2017. <laughs> now, can anyone record the plot? <laughs> I only listen to your podcast. I haven't seen it myself, but I, I, I can actually summarize, even though I haven't seen the movie. And if I can summarize it, surely I can take the points. Yes, yeah. yeah. I haven't even seen the movie. So, Gerard Butler sends Gerard Butler to space <laughs> to, Ger to Gerard Butler, the world safe. <laughs> Did you get points? Nailed it. <laughs> That's actually that is uh, super that's accurate. cheating though because he literally he literally just memorized the Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> Gerard Butler since Gerard Butler <laughs> to Gerard Butler the world. At each into... one of them, at each one of them is is a link, but the one is like a link to the actor, the other one's a link to the character, and the other one's a link to like the concept <laughs> of Gerard Butler. Um, which is like realizing utopia. <laughs> so it's just, it's fixing it's just the world. To three separate pages. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah, outstanding. Okay, this one I've included in here. I know Andre knows what it is, but the synopsis was just okay. so good. All right. Fateful Findings, 2013. <sighs> okay, okay, don't give away. Don't give away. One of my favorites. 2013. 2013. Fateful Findings. If they're Fateful far off, can, can I give oh, a quote? I know exactly quote. what yeah, it is. Uh, Andre can give you a, qu a quote to help along. Actually, Actors. this might throw them off guard, but it doesn't matter. The character so there's an actual resistance. quote from the movie. And I, I, and this is probably going to be better acted than what Neil Breen actually does. Fully I can't fun. go on like this. I can't go on like this. I'm an American. I love this country. I can't go on like this. Okay, cool. Wait, that's Faithful Findings. I've seen the trailer. No, that's Double for Down. Sorry, I gave a quote from Double Down. No, you gave a quote from Double Down. Ah, that's my Neil Breen. <laughs> uh, uh, shout out to you, Neil, if you're listening. Obviously, though, obviously. Um, Fateful findings. Oh, We've mentioned his name. He's zeroed in on it. And it's 2013. 2013. Fateful findings. Fateful findings. Okay, cool. So, hmm, it's about Nostradamus. <laughs> 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 right, and, 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 and basically, what, what happens is Nicolas Cage, um, Nicolas Cage's daughter goes missing yeah yeah and he finds a video <laughs> recording of her giving him cryptic clues to a document which gives him access to the lost city of atlantis and in the lost city of atlantis are the true writings the final writings of nostradamus which were sort of considered to be too heretical to be published in his day and he goes in search of this like a whole bunch of ancillary characters die on route he finds it and it gives the prophecy for the end of the world, which he only manages to avert by mere seconds. And then, I guess, falls to his knees and does this while a helicopter flies overhead. And, and he finds oh, is it also a Michael Bay movie? Yes, obviously. <laughs> and he, he finds those scrolls of, like, heralding the end times, showing what's going to happen. He picks it up, this book, and it just says, Art of the Deal. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, no, 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 there's actually a picture of him, Nicolas Cage, Finding the book, oh, and, then, a like, um, <laughs> and then and then behind him, there's like a monster sort of like looming over him, and then he just turns around and goes, bam, and shoots it between the eyes, like. But then it's his daughter. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Okay, how close am I? <laughs> You're a little off. Do you know anything on this? I am gonna go with fateful findings. Okay, so if I break it down, it's obviously about a priest. Who's lost his faith yeah. and he goes on a journey to find his Wait, faith. Faithful or fateful? Faithful. It's faithful. Yeah, no, I'm getting yeah, to I'm the faith yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has lost his faith and he's going on a road trip for Jesus to find himself and find his faith again. And find Jesus. Yeah. This he's... time there are two tire tracks in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> and... and then at one point, and then at one point, there's like. 
four, and then it's like because Jesus let you ride in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he goes on this journey, this road trip, and everywhere he stops, yeah, you know, something happens that tries to push him back towards mm. his faith, and he starts to believing. Wait a minute, it's this is fate. I was meant to go on this journey, hence. God made me doubt my own faith to send me on this journey to go on a mission for him. And then wow. he stops the apocalypse by shooting the Antichrist in the face. Yo, God's uh, bored. <laughs> can, can I say something, Jason? I would watch both those movies, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> they, 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 these are phenomenal premises. My, but what I do want to add here is I've seen this film and I cannot even begin to summarize it. I have no idea what I watched. It's one of those B movies where I don't know what I watched. I don't know what the fuck just happened in I'm front really of me. I'm really excited then for your reaction to the synopsis. <laughs> it's not going to be the movie I thought I watched. <laughs> okay. Fateful Findings 2013. A small boy discovers a mystical power as a child. He is then separated from his childhood girlfriend. He grows up to be a cons computer scientist who is hacking into the most secret national and international secrets, as well as being an acclaimed novel writer. <laughs> His childhood finding gives him amazing paranormal powers. He is reunited with a childhood girlfriend, mystically, on his hospital deathbed as his relationship okay. with his current drug addict girlfriend is deteriorating. <laughs> okay, I remember the that The passions baby. build between the threesome. Mystical psychiatric and worldly forces <laughs> rise to prevent him from revealing the hacked secrets. He attempts to reveal all in a Was Washington DC large press conference with fateful and dangerous consequences. That's it, I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. I quit. <laughs> I don't know. I remember half. I remember the trivial details like she meets him at the hospital. That I saw. The subtext and everything else. I'm lost on. I'm back. You guys need me. <laughs> Why is this made? It's really one of the worst films you can ever watch. In an entertaining way um, or just in a just unpleasant? No, it's it just like you're just gobsmacked throughout a bit. It, it, it's not cringe. And it's not like, oh my god, it's so bad. It's just like, how, who thought of this? Why is this scene here? It's just, it's badly edited. It has no continuity. You don't know what the plot even is. Uh, it, it, it just, it messes with your brain. Just yeah, watch think, it. Well, we, we don't want to, like, we should probably, like, warn you, we don't want to sort of retread our Batman v Superman discussion every oh, week. Oh, right. So. Okay, yeah. so if you, if you Only when, it, that only when it. it comes up, I guess, <laughs> okay. organically. Yeah. Yeah, so stop trying to shoehorn it. I never watched <laughs> that. Or did I? Maybe I thought it was faithful finding. Okay. <laughs> okay. Both of you definitely know this, so this is for you, Dion. I'm hoping oh. you don't know it. Miami Connection, 1987. <sighs> I love this movie. It's okay, so, so I'm assuming... <laughs> Okay, Miami Connection, I'm assuming is some kind of like police buddy thing like set in Miami and it's like the CD, un like maybe the one partner is like part of the CD underworld and there's sports cars. Am I uh, even what, What's the 180s thing that you went to last time that was right? Is that a martial arts? There's the martial arts. Oh wow! I no. Nope. And that. there's there's a drug ring. Okay, well, see the underworld, but Jesus. Yeah. But what okay. makes these people special? That's what, the wait, thing. Okay, these there's people something... have a special quality. The group of it's crime fighters. So they have a certain special I'll, quality. I'll actually let Marcus read the synopsis they, out. Oh well, they. <laughs> They have a special quality. No, they're, they're not like, just... Con uh, they're actually Taekwondo like masters, but but what what do they also do? Like part time. They do Taekwondo? No, wait, let let the synopsis reveal it, because that's okay. a pretty good synopsis. <laughs> okay, I just All thought right. he could... He probably won't guess. Uh, the year. Are they astronauts? Closer now. <laughs> Close enough. The year is 1987. Motorcycle ninjas tighten their grip on Florida's narcotic trade viciously annihilating anyone who dares move in on their turf. Multinational martial arts rock band Dragon Style have yes! had enough. Yes! Yes! 
and embark on a roundhouse wreck wave of crime crushing justice. Friends through eternity, loyalty, together. honesty, stick together through thick, thick and thin. thin. That's a thick song. Or, that thick they... orphan. Sorry, you guys, you, guys have, you guys have a super tight harmony at the end there. Just right? Nice, but that's literally that's a song that hey, they. It's they, not they, even done yet. Not, oh, sorry. When not chasing beach bunnies or performing their hit songs. Mark and the boys are kicking and chopping at the drug world's smelliest underbelly. It'll take every ounce face is amazing. of I just want to... blood and courage, but Dragon Sound <laughs> can't stop until they've completely destroyed the dealers, the drunk bikers, the kill-crazy ninjas, the middle-aged thungs, and the stupid cocaine and the entire <laughs> Miami connection. <laughs> What the stupid cocaine? Yeah. Um, could you please, Marcus, um, pull up the poster for Dion? Yes, I Friends will do so. Oh, there, there's a, there, two, there are two, three, uh, two or three songs in the movie that they perform. The Taekwondo band, but they band Dragon Sound is on stage just pumping out some tunes. And they're all orphans as well. Or the one, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or, or the one guy says orphans. And that's the poster. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say that they're all orphans. That's kind they're of like a key. You know, <laughs> that's a key fucking. I just want the, uh, our oh. listeners to hear this. Dion literally can't even <laughs> right now. <laughs> you need to watch it, man. It's it's, a, it's one of the classics. I must admit, it's top ten. I'm actually it I'm is. actually properly emotional now. I need to see this movie. It's so good. <laughs> really, I really even do. I even um got Thomas for his one birthday a Dragon Sound T-shirt. <laughs> Where did it's you his find favorite, one? It? I printed it. I uh, made it. Is that like his favorite? I probably. I know it's one of his top. Oh my god, that is incredible. <laughs> it's it's that it's is... one of the best B movies ever. I mean. That is. That's basically like scientists got together in a lab and they're like, okay, this yeah. is Dion guy. <laughs> we, have, we have to make a movie for him. Dude, you'll love it. So and one I... of the things he loves are he loves rock and he loves ninjas and he loves like movies about motorcycle yeah. gangs. What does he hate? Well, Dion really hates drugs. And you like music. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and he kind of likes Batman and Batman's an orphans. <laughs> Dude, but I think why you would also love this movie is uh, it's it's good for the same reason that The Room is good in the sense of if you read up on this film, it was made by this um, South Korean guy that came to the US with a load of money and he wanted to make a film. He tried to no, make no, no. as good a film as he no, can. No, he, came, he came to teach martial arts first. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he was like oh, a master. I've seen this on TV. Yeah. yeah. I, there, there was like a, there was a, oh, no, on YouTube, sorry. Yeah, yeah there was a documentary. There, there was a documentary about him. Yes, yeah. it's that guy it's that became that. like a motivational speaker type guy. But the yeah. point is, he tried, like Tommy Wiseau, to make as good a movie as possible. And he didn't have any I experience. It was saw, a train wreck. I saw part of the, the documentary about like, yeah, him now, like yeah. Yeah, yes. doing motivational speaking. Yes. And, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, it's, shit. It's so good. That. You really do. Okay, so there. the last one that I'll give you is is a, is a staple in the B-movie world, and that is a shark-based B-movie. Super Shark. Mm. That came out in 2011. Yeah? Super Shark. Uh, I know this one. Can I, I don't know, but I yeah. can guess. It's about a shark, yeah? 15% bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Well done, you just created one of the highest grossing movies of the 70s. <laughs> what's, it, what's it called? Super Shark. That's Super just shark. Jaws, that was its name okay. in China, I'm I don't gonna, know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 300% bigger. Like, yeah. I'm gonna say it, it's like, it's absolutely just incredibly massive. And it takes like, it takes like bites out of ships and stuff. Like, okay. like cargo ships. Um, and then they have to, I guess... Yeah, what which year did you say this was? 2011. 2011. So okay, so there's definitely some sort of celebrity cameo in there, possibly one that dies. Um, and yeah, and I guess they 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 sort of the the military has to to, to band together and they, with with helicopters and and U boats and shit, whatever they used in 2011 it was a long time ago, um, and try and take this shark out. But, but. They discover that its power came from 
nuclear energy <laughs> originally <laughs> so they realize that nuclear oh, is only going to make it yeah. more powerful so they actually have to befriend it i think the new <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes sense. i think the new york times said like sharknado nado without the winds <laughs> So. so just a bunch of sharks. Yeah, it's a sharks. Okay. Just, just okay. Yeah. Okay. It's 2011, so I'm gonna go on a full-on pitch here. All right. Genetic scientist Eric Roberts, played by <laughs> Eric Roberts, <laughs> <laughs> is trying to clone <laughs> sharks Ooh, yeah. because for medical research. And it's I'm sure he's trying to clone the sharks and not resurrect the clone corpses. <laughs> no, no, no. He's actively cloning sharks. Because they're, they're immune to bird flu. They're immune, 2011. Yeah, they're immune to bird flu. Thank you. And he keeps cloning and cloning them, but something goes terribly wrong one night. <laughs> Maybe the cloning... <laughs> <laughs> control V, control V. <laughs> There's a weight on the keyboard. <laughs> but one night something goes terribly wrong. Let's say lightning strikes the offshore installation and the cloning machine goes haywire mm, yeah. and births a shark that's at least 16% bigger <laughs> than a regular great white shark. Okay. And it goes on a rampage. Okay. Yeah. So you're thinking 15% bigger shark, 16%, 300%. You just described a megalodon. <laughs> well, you're going to be pretty good with this one. In an offshore drilling accident. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> an offshore drilling accident releases a giant primordial shark. Yeah. Oh. That's when the mean. shark flies and walks on land what I, I honestly and i'm not shitting you i was gonna say it goes on land and then i thought like <laughs> nah that's taking it a step too far but it's horrible it's horrible this is way worse than eating contact uh, container tanks oh, like you god thought. this is a movie that i watched when the shark flies and walks on land threatening to to turn a bikini contest into a bloodbath <laughs> Marine, as you do, as marine you do. biologist Cat Carmichael arrives to destroy the shark and save beachgoers. Oh, I think Marcus was definitely closer there. Her efforts mm. are stymied by corporate bad guy Roger Wade and his flunky steward. steward oh, his flunky steward. Bad, bad punctuation here. Who are only interested in their own agenda of money, money, money. <laughs> the song from Abba, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With time running out for beach-loving humans, Carmichael <laughs> recruits heroic skipper Chuck and fearless disc jockey Dynamite Stevens to help her blast the bloodthirsty Wait, shark you said it back wrong. to a watery grave. Wait, I just you used said it music. wrong. Music is this like uh, Dynamite is, Stevens? Dynamite is, is Stevens. This like, is this like Star Trek Beyond, <laughs> <laughs> where they use the power of music to destroy their enemies? I love how they're just going after like beachgoers. Like the shark doesn't never venture beyond the beach. Yeah. beach so these news bulletins are just like. The, the world will soon be without its beach goers. Everyone else is like, cool. Yeah. I'm just sitting there going, thank God. <laughs> it's a bad time. Oh, man. I really wish Eric Roberts was in this one because it sounds like something that he would do. It's, it's really, so Eric yeah, Roberts. It is. <laughs> He, he's been in a couple of these B-movies. I mean, I he's only been, been in, in B-movies. So he, yeah. he, 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 um... he was the scientist in Sharktopus, remember? Yes, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. And his acting has improved since the 80s. It's amazing. It's stayed consistently bad. It's incredible. So, we're okay. all losers. Yeah. I think and we all got a few points. I think Dion accrued the most points throughout yeah, that. he did, actually. <laughs> Through sheer blind luck. <laughs> Willing to take those But risks. I think Dion wins because he hasn't seen Miami, Miami Connection. Connection yet. Oh, what a win. He gets to watch, watch for, for the first time. time. Oh. Friends wow, we were in sick there. Together through thick or thin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Good, good job. Oh, yeah. That was a fun episode. Yeah. Yeah. Fun episode. Thank fun you, episode. Andre, for Thank joining you. us. It's yes. been a real pleasure. Thank Shop you very much. The fun episode. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so recommendations for this week. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend a B movie I enjoy. The one with Seinfeld. Sorry, I I held it in the whole thing. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake! Sorry, guys, you don't get recommendations. Dion killed the podcast. <laughs> and he just, that one was an AOE attack. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to recommend Raiders of the Lost Shark. Oh, that's the one. I you watch. keep recommending that <laughs> to me, at least. It is quality. Okay, <laughs> it is quality. I don't want to tell you anything about it. Just go into it. 
and understand. But you, you know, there's a flying shark that explodes twice. <laughs> twice. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Right, that's the right number of times for a shark uh, to explode. Yeah. Um, but also another little thing: the disaster artist came out on Friday uh, here in South Africa. I I recommend going to see it. Yeah, it was fantastic. We all went to watch it. Yeah, we all went to go watch it, and it is good. It's just fantastic. It's actually, I think any it's, fan it's of the room. Surprisingly good, really. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's kind of I don't know how they made it accessible to people who have seen the room and who haven't, because you'll you'll be intrigued. Like this, surely can't be a real movie, and then they show scenes from the, you know, that they they recreate Side scenes from from fr fr from the original, and they show you this is real. It's that bad. I I just recommend everyone watches it as well. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yep, Andre, do you have a particular B movie you um, want to throw out I think, um, I, if you guys haven't mentioned it before, but I assume you focus mainly on good movies. But um, it's one, both of our, I mean, it's one of our favorite movies, uh, B movies ever, a Samurai Cop. Um, the Room we spoke about enough, I think everyone's going to watch that now anyway, so it's going to be a buzzword. But Samurai Cop has some of the worst editing you'll ever find. Um, it, it has some of the worst acting. Um, to give, can I give an example? Just a little teaser. You would be in the, the one point. It, it's it's an eighties film. Or is it early nineties? I don't know. Anyways, it's that sort of era. So it has the superfluous, like um, you know, uh, topless scenes. N never too pornographic, but always like, oh, that's there's a superfluous scene that we have to put in. So there's literally like a scene: fight, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. G drug wars. You know, the good guy cops fighting the baddies. Any eight, any given eighties movie, they shoot at each other. Whilst it's mid combat, there's a hard cut to boobs in your face. <laughs> so it's just like fight, 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 hard cut, boobs. And then it's just a slow scene that never really leads anywhere. And it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah it, it just really that was is good. extraneous and pointless. It's just boobs. Boobs for boobs' sake. Yeah. Uh, Marcus. I am going to suggest because today is Valentine's Day, and if you're listening to this podcast, you should find a loved one. And go to Netflix and watch The Notebook and then realize that it does not hold up and it's always been a bad movie. Oh, dear. That sounds like, that sounds like, that sounds like a lot of fun, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Or if you want to watch something good, there's a ton of other rom-coms on there, too. I just really wanted to take a stab at The Notebook because Ooh. fuck that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Fuck the movie hard. Yeah, like, yeah. really badly. That's... Like, hate it. But, um... If you're looking for something and you don't mind Amy Schumer, Trainwreck, train wreck, which is also a rom-com, was recently added to Netflix, so maybe give that a shot. Dion, do you have any movies, B or otherwise? Uh, well, I'm just looking here at the, the Blu-ray releases, and one that I'm actually probably going to pick up is the 8 uh, movie col Friday the 13th collection. Ooh. Which is coming out on Blu-ray. And then also a movie I did not know existed, which is probably quite embarrassing. Uh, but that's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, just called Leatherface, mm. which I did not know existed, but is apparently coming out on Blu-ray from 1990. So I'm going to oh. be watching the shit out of that. Leatherface, and that's Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> He's leather butt. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Plugs. Andre, I'm assuming you still have nothing plugged this uh, week? No, I, I did start now my um, Avaz uh, petition against um, global poverty. No, no, I haven't changed anything. Uh, I'll do content one day when I'm back on the show, and then hopefully we all have our own shows. For now, I'm just a fan of this one. Aww. You can join our extended cinematic universe. Yeah, Tom, no, who's your Tom, favorite guy be, now? Huh? Thomas, Thomas has to be on your show first, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, got, he's got to re recruit you. No. He's got to appear in a stinger. <laughs> Damn Nick Fury. Uh, Marcus. Oh, plugs. Um, escape from my backlog. Still going strong. This week, we'll be looking at a narrative game that is very Lynchian in a way. And I found it fascinating and really weird. And it got a mixed reception. Which means it's good. Nice. What's this Because called? all good things get mixed receptions. It's called Virginia, and we'll be taking a look at it this Friday. Mm. Nice. No, wait, are we? Oh, wait. Are we? Yes. Yes. Yes, dates. Oh, God, it's the future again. <laughs> <laughs> it, if, if, was, the, was the game sort of stronger supporters, like David Lynch fans specifically, like, like his, his collection of fans? They call themselves the Lynch Group. Or the Lynch Collective. 
Uh, <laughs> Dion, you don't get to do plugs this week. And, uh, uh, and, if, they, <laughs> and if they uh, and if they go out and there's like someone who disagrees with them and they they sort of form like a group, they're gonna go do a, a good old fashioned attacking. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're not very creative. Like the yeah. gets no plugs this week. <laughs> you can follow me at J Musicanth. Uh, you can follow us at Cinebeards. I'll fucking follow you home and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Calm down, Leatherface. Oh, crabbies. I really hope Jason doesn't die <laughs> this week. Otherwise, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> this is so suspicious. And I can never remember where I've been. <laughs> we'll tell the cops it was you. <laughs> Let's go drink Krabby's. Bye, everyone. Krabby's.